the DA uh, another five years in office to carry on uh, delivering to them there. I think the Cape Town result, along with the DA's performance uh, in other metros, as well as the great uh, victory at St. Umgeni municipality, has shown that the DA has made a significant recovery of the lost ground uh, that we lost in the 2019 election. When you look at the uh, projected outcomes for all of the metros now across the country, uh, the DA is going to grow and improve on those from 2019. The only one of the three major parties that's going to improve on its performance in the 2019 elections. Now, obviously, everyone here is comparing the 2016 election and that is the right thing to do. But I think that you miss out on some of the trend analysis if you miss out on that trend point of putting the 2019 election result in there as well. Because that then starts to uh, show you that just how catastrophic the disaster the ANC is facing uh, in South Africa, particularly in the metros around the country, and also the fact that other parties like the EFF, um, on the projections that we have, are going to recede uh, in those metros. Obviously, this is encouraging. We took action in 2019 to recommit the party to our core values and principles and to uh, move away from some of the errors that we've made in the past. And I think that is reflecting certainly in the results in the metros. In Etegweni, for instance, we've been able to win nine wards off the ANC uh, in the Etegweni metro. Etegweni, as well, for the very first time in the history of that municipality, is going to fall below 50% majority for the ANC. Uh, that is significant. I mean, obviously, I started my political career in Etegweni, and uh, at that stage, I think the ANC had about a 68% majority. The fact that today they're sitting um, under 50% and well under 50%, I think, is very, very significant. And it also shows us what is possible in South Africa, where we can bring the ANC below 50%. In terms of Cape Town, I'm really excited about the fact that we get another five years there. Our mayoral candidate there, Jordan Hill Lewis, I think will be the youngest metro mayor in the country at 34 years old. As I said to somebody a bit earlier, if you think DHL delivers, wait till you see our GHL delivers uh, in the city of Cape Town. It's going to be, I think, a great new era. Uh, thanks for the drum roll, Nick. Uh, the great new era for the uh, for the city of Cape Town um, going forward. Uh, Jordan already has a seven-point plan that he's unveiled during the course of the campaign, which looks at doing a number of things. Firstly, of course, shielding residents from the failures of national government, particularly around load shedding, moving forward to advance into the IPP space and ensuring that we can shield residents there. Safety and security, housing delivery, water and sanitation and infrastructure are just some of those things. Now I know that some of you are very interested about coalitions and so I did want to just set out for you our process over the next few days. Obviously the counting has been a bit slower than we would have anticipated. Uh, we would like to have been in huddles uh, already with various parties but we do need to see what the final law of the land is. We're hoping that by later this evening uh, but certainly by tomorrow morning that the fuller picture will start to emerge we've got a center running at the Sheraton Hotel which is crunching the numbers and doing the projections so we're pretty confident that by later this evening we will have a, a, a firm lie of the land what we've then is developed a matrix we've been working on for the last three months for each municipality in South Africa what we will then do is input the figures that we get that we project into the matrix and what that will do is start to give us the various permutations that will be possible within those municipalities uh, and the various coalition options. Once those permutations have been decided, we will sit down then with our negotiating team and our federal executive and we will go through those various options and determine which would be the best option um, for us, for the residents of the city uh, and for a stable coalition. And I want to repeat that because I want everybody to be absolutely uh, clear about this. I don't want to go into unstable coalitions. The situation we've had in Chwane over the last five years has been incredibly difficult. Uh, running a minority government, living between council meetings, uh, it's very, very difficult to do so. So I'll be looking to create stable able solid coalitions that will be able to go the distance and not fall apart from one council meeting to the next. Uh, that will commit then to a coalition agreement that we've already drafted. Our lawyers have also spent the last two months doing a draft agreement. What we will then do is go out to the various parties that we believe are the better permutations 
and we will share this document with them. We will enter into talks with those political parties and obviously they will take the document. I'm sure they would like to make some input into those documents and put their views on the table. And so those negotiations will hopefully start as early as tomorrow, but certainly as we, as we head out later in this week. We're not going to rush into knee-jerk reactions or, uh, or, or hasty decisions. This needs to be a deliberate decision that goes the distance over the next five years. The metros have been characterized by instability over the last five years, and what we're going out there for is a stable coalition that's going to be able to deliver services and last that distance. Um, once that's concluded, we will obviously then make an announcement uh, around those where they've been finalized and share that information publicly. We also intend, once all the parties have signed the coalition agreement to make those documents public, not only to the media, but also to the residents of those municipalities, so that they understand very clearly what the objectives of the coalition are, what the coalitions wish to achieve over the five-year period, and what the red lines are. So interference and tenders will not be tolerated. Corruption and maladministration will not be tolerated. Cater deployment will not be tolerated. And if any of the parties cross those red lines, they must understand that we will walk away from that coalition. And we want people to know up front what the red lines for us will be. I'm sure there will be red lines for other political parties uh, as well. Um, and we then hope to, to start a new era of stable coalition government here. I must also say that should our negotiations fail, should we not be able to put together a stable coalition based on values and principles, we will be very prepared to go and take up our seat as the official opposition in any of those municipalities and serve the residents in that council as a strong, determined, capable opposition as we are in Parliament and other councils for the remainder of the five years. There's only one thing worse than losing an election, and that's going into election, forming a coalition and then governing badly. I don't want that to be the story in five years' time as we go and ask people for their votes again, uh, and so we want that stability. I may also just say that I think these results um, across the board um, show us what is possible and that we can bring the ANC below 50% in the national and provincial elections. And certainly the projections in the metro areas show us very, very significantly just how much ground the ANC has lost. I believe that's going to be the game changer moment in South Africa. We need to get these coalitions right because I think they're going to be the way of the future as we build new majorities in provinces and at a national level uh, in the years to come. Thank you, Sabiwa. I'm happy to take any questions. I'm, I am aware there's another smaller briefing taking place in a few minutes so um <laughs> cool let's uh, perhaps take a round of five Karin, nick uh okay I'll, I'll take those three for now i have a question about coalitions you said mm. the way of the future mm. um but when parties campaign we never we don't know the voters don't know mm. that they will go into coalitions so mm. do you think that will change in perhaps the next mm. uh in the next five years I, I don't I, look. I, I certainly think at a local level, it's not going to change. Um, so, so I think it's going to be difficult. I think every party goes out to get as many votes in the box as they possibly can, so they can you know, try and, and energize their supporters. Uh, we saw what happened in KwaZulu Natal, for instance. Uh, in I think it was just before to, uh, after 2000, when the DA and the IFP announced a, the coalition for change, and we campaigned on that. Both parties ended up uh, uh, losing votes uh, and didn't energize. So you, what a party wants to do is energize their base in an election so that you can get your most votes in the box. However, at a provincial and national level, who knows what's going to happen once the ANC falls below 50%. We've seen in places like Kenya and other countries in Africa, these umbrella bodies that campaign as an umbrella coalition to unseat a government or to form a government. And so that may well be the future. The truth is a proportional representation system lends itself to coalitions. Every proportional representation system in the world eventually ends up in, in, in a coalition. So I, I do think that in the future, there may well be an umbrella organization uh, that is formed of a number of parties that are currently in the political spectrum that unite to form an umbrella. Who knows, it may even be a new organization uh, in, in the politics to do that. But I think 
these are the this is the genesis of it these are the the seeds that are going to have to germinate over the five years to give and restore i think people's hope in coalitions which is why for me stability is the bedrock of these things we cannot have another five years of chaos uh, particularly in the metros so stability is what i'm looking for uh, in coalitions and shared values and principles uh, who's next nick i think was next here uh, Um, yes, I do think it is. I think that the result that's on the board as well is going to reconfirm that. A lot of people wrote. Mm. Sorry, I didn't know you you hadn't finished, Nick. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, like that, as I said, I think you've got to put the trend point in there. And remember, the party I inherited was a party that got 20,6% and then plummeted to 16% in the polls and, and stayed there for about a year as we started to, to turn the party around. I think the results on the board behind shows that not only have we re reconsolidated, but we started to grow, even on, on that election. The, also, the 2016 election was a different universe. We were at the height of the Stop Zuma campaign, the most probably the most unpopular president in the history of the country, people on the streets of South Africa. Six years ago, three years ago, or less than three years ago, we had the 2019 election, which we can't ignore as a, as a barometer of where things are, and with Ramaphosa at the helm. So I think it is a useful comparison. I'm not for one instance saying disregard 2016. What I am saying is that we do need to put a midpoint there to see the trend lines that are happening. And that's when you see what's happened to the EFF, and I think while they've been a bit quieter in this, at, this, uh, at this particular result center, is that they can also see what has happened, particularly in the metros so you know obviously it's going to be up for the federal council and the federal executive to decide i think we've uh, had a, a, a good election in spite of the uh, uh, you know of the huge predictions that were made of us getting 16 17 19 percent uh, and i think that it's a respectable result uh, and one that we can build on going into the future Is your position safe? yes i feel completely secure absolutely secure Wow, are you planning a challenge, Nick? Should I, is there something I should know about? For Motta and then Natasha, and then I'll pick one more if there is, and then I'll close the session. And Liz, okay, cool. So, John, I think let's take all okay, the questions sure, yeah, and then yeah, we'll ask just yeah. so that uh, colleagues can move. Mm. Yes, Natasha. Mm. Yeah, thanks very much. So, on, on George, I think there was a local dynamic there, and I don't think you should write off the uh, Cape Exit uh, factor there particularly, who, who came together with the Freedom Front there. Uh, I think Cape Exit has got a very strong presence in George. Um, but I'm convinced that we will retain control of that municipality in a coalition. It will continue to be a DA mayor there. We have by far the bigger majority there, and we will continue to be in the driving seat there with, uh, with a potential coalition with uh, probably the Freedom Front. But as I say, no talks have been entered into yet, but uh, that would secure us a significant majority in that particular municipality. Uh, oh. Yes, so the last part of my question was, do you think the people of George are going to well, I'm not a leader in George, so it's very difficult to say. Um, no, I don't think so. I think that um, there's a local dynamic there around Cape Exit particularly and around turnout. I mean, it's been a very difficult government for us. You remember, we had to remove a mayor there for uh, alleged corruption and maladministration. We didn't want to leave him in office there. We removed him because he didn't do, uh, fit our values in that there. And obviously that, you know, that, that did have an impact. I'm, I'm not going to pretend it didn't. Uh, and it did was a knock of confidence and a deal having to remove a mayor because of uh, of, uh, of unsavory behavior or, or behavior that's not becoming what we expect. So I think that, that well, there's a local dynamic there. But I think the fact that we are the biggest party in George shows that by far the overwhelming number of people in George still believe that the DA is the party uh, that is able to, to govern and govern well. Um, the, the, we'll have a, a negotiating team. I will be heading up the team, the federal council chair, the deputy chairs, as well as uh, a number of other people identified will be the main uh, team at the top 
then provincial leaders and provincial chairs will be responsible for local negotiations and they will then feed back up into our team. But as I say, it's a very scientific approach we've adopted uh, that we've been working for the last few months on getting those matrixes right and the Federal Council Chair's office has been, you know, uh, been doing the formulas and, and, the, and the, the form in which those take, which is going to make it very easy for us to just input the, the results and see what the permutations are and, and what that would mean going forward. Uh, but local, it'll be done locally in the, in the provinces, feeding up and of course ultimately our federal executive will make the final decision about whether a coalition agreement is signed off or not. So the negotiating team will then report back on each particular municipality uh, to do it. We're also not going to be looking for um, uh, omnibus agreements. We want to look at, at, a, at a municipality by municipality agreement. So we may work with one, count, uh, one party in one municipality, but not in another municipality. It, it, it may differ. What the big thing here is stability. How do we bring stable, accountable government that delivers to the people of those municipalities so we can get things done for them? Cool. Okay. Last question, Lizzie, and then we wrap up. Uh, Joanna, in terms of the, you've stated that you don't want to work with the EFF, mm. with that sure, period, yeah. but are there other parties where you have identified that you would not ideally want to work mm. with? Uh, uh, and, and also, in terms of coalition agreements, mm. in uh, Johannesburg, for instance, mm. you will need uh, parties such as the uh, Action mm. Are you willing to go into a coalition where you find yourself in the back burner, uh, in, in the sense that your coalition partners become mayors mm. of, that, of that municipality. Yeah, well, on, on the first one, uh, look, as I said, we will talk to any party that shares those core four values and principles. There's only one party we've ruled out at this stage, and that's the, the EFF. Um, I think that uh, what I've said about bringing the ANC below 50% and the broader project about building a new majority uh, would mean that it's very difficult to do any deal with the ANC either. Um, in terms of actually say, we'll be happy to talk to them, but you know, they promised people they were going to get 40%, I think, in Chwane and 30-something percent in Joburg. They're going to end up at about 16. We're going to end up at 30. It would be odd to have a mayor from a small party uh, there. We're happy to talk about, we talk about MACO seats, etc. Uh, we'd be happy to talk about sharing portfolios, uh, but it would be very difficult as the lead party in a coalition to hand the mayoralty over to a smaller party. Yeah. Thank you very much, colleagues. Hope Thanks very much, everybody. I hope we finished on time for you.